How you folks doing? My name is James Clem. Let's talk about something really exciting here. I've been a Cerec user for just about 20 years, and I've really enjoyed that journey as we've seen the software improve, and there's so many things that we can do chairside with Cerec. Being a digital office, I see a need to branch out, just like my camera system. I have multiple camera systems for different purposes, and each camera system has its strength. I am branching out into other design softwares, mainly because I want diagnostics. I want a good wax up software such as ExoCAD so I can take the journey of my smile makeover and complete it within the software, never missing a beat. And now with printing becoming a major portion of our journey, particularly with these shell smile testers, where we can create shell veneers to test the smile and help the patient make a decision and choice so we can help them through the process. I want a software where I can do the digital wax up, do the diagnostics and complete it clear through the prep and final restorations where it's really clean and smooth. I've used the Cerec software for years to complete the process, but it's a little clunky. I like ExoCAD for this because it has a really smooth journey to it. And in addition to that, with the DS Core, we now can upload our DXD file from the Prime Scan, which I love this camera. I love the Prime Scan. We can upload a DXD file to DS Core, and then that will convert that into the ExoCAD file so we can use color in ExoCAD. And it's been working out really well. Now for my larger cases, I like to print my provisionals, and then I finish my restorations with the PM7 by Claire giving me more time to be artistic and really refine the process even though i love Sarek for the same day dentistry my larger cases i like to take that time to really give it my best and be the best i can be now this video is an introduction to the workflow in exocad for like a single central using the copy in the mirror feature i actually like it better than the Cerec software it has a few more flavors to it and what i've heard from my colleagues is maybe exocad is a little more complicated software even though it has a lot more features into it this video is breaking down the exocad workflow with a Cerec mindset so if you're coming out of Cerec and exocad this is a video that will break it down to make that workflow really work well. But let's go ahead and get started. I don't go into the refinement of each tool and mouse features and keyboard features in this video, but that will be coming in other videos really soon. So let's go ahead and get started with copying mirror using ExoCAD with the mindset of a Cerec user transferring that workflow into ExoCAD. Critical step. Orientate the model to the occlusal view of your working model. And while you're there, turn on and add a custom view for that occlusal table. But we're not done with that. One thing nice about ExoCAD is Control Shift R turns on the grid. You can toggle through different grid options, set up your occlusal plane and your smile plane, and any other views that will assist during the design process that makes setting the model for design really nice for future steps. Detecting the margin line is fairly simple in ExoCAD. If there's a well distinguished line, you can use the detect feature. Four points on that will outline that margin fairly well. And then we can go back and correct. I usually find I like to remove some of those little pinned areas and that happens by holding down the left mouse and clicking on the right mouse and you can erase some of those pinned views to streamline your drawing on the margins. The next step is crown bottoms. There's two things I want to look at, particularly the intimate contact of the ceramic or material on that margin. We don't want that green line to be going up the actual wall that could create binding. You need to know your milling unit as well, but in most cases, 200 to 400 microns for that intimate marginal thickness area will be adequate. And go to the advanced tab, know your burr size for your milling unit, and then add 200 microns to that size. That's important to check on that, otherwise it could knock the restoration off the block during mill.
To copy the tooth next door, click on your desired tooth to copy. And the software will invert that for tooth placement. This is what you want to do at this stage in time. You want to get that tooth placed as close as you can in all the different angles. The meso embrasures, the tipping, the torquing, the emergence. That's the beauty of this software. Before we attach this tooth to the model, we want that tooth to be perfectly placed. When you're in ExoCAD, by this placement being really well defined, there's minimal detailing needed in this workflow for the next step. Reforming. Our desire here is to place the tooth well so there's a few steps we do before we're completed with our design. Number one is smooth the emergence and the marginal area. It's really easy to smooth these areas up. Also using the anatomic tool features, pull in the embrasure form when we're closing cervical embrasures, close them from the lingual and proceed with any other minor detailing to optimize this tooth. Our desire here is to get 95% of the final design. On the lingual fossa here, it's slightly over emerged because of minimal thickness. We want to modify that by smoothing using the shift key and then add back to create a better fossa environment for finishing. Our final step in this workflow is adapting the proximal occlusal contacts. I really like this in ExoCAD. Know your milling unit. This is our parameters. I like negative 20 microns for that proximal adaption. I find that using the PM7, that pretty much will drop these in. And I'm using that same parameter for the occlusion as well. Some final smoothing steps as you see fit. Sometimes if you adapt, it will pick that up sub gingerly. This workflow is so easy. And what I love about this is the fingerprinting. As you see here, the fingerprint is so refined. Using a refined milling mode on your five axis here will pretty much finish almost 95% of what you want. All you do is texture, add your final surface luster, whether it be polish or glaze. It's never been better in our virtual field of restorative dentistry with monolithic ceramics. Okay, that wasn't very difficult. It is true. Anytime you use a new software, you have to kind of get your brain working with it. In fact, when we went from the 4.0 into the 5.0 software in CEREC, the workflow is basically the same, but we had different icons, so we had to think for a moment. It's the same way when you're transferring that skill set over to ExoCAD. It's really not difficult to do. I have really enjoyed this journey. It gives me so many more tools, but most importantly is that it makes me a more complete digital dentist. And I feel like we're at that point in time where we're going to be choosing the softwares that give us the best asset value to complete what we're going to accomplish in the clinical theater. And I think we're definitely at that point in time. And I'm at that point in time where everything in my clinical theater is now digital. And I like that workflow because it's more proficient, it's more accurate and predictable. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.